In this HVACR training video, we're going over how to troubleshoot an electrical circuit board in an HVAC unit. So this is a question I get asked a lot and technicians are wondering, is there a common test that you can do with a multimeter on all the various different types of control boards out there? And the reality is that no, there is not such a test, uh, but I'm gonna go over what technicians are doing in the field in order to diagnose each of these control boards. So the very first thing that you need to think about is what type of control board do I have? So what type of control board is based on what type of units installed in, right? So these two are on air handlers and these are in air handlers that have a PSC blower motor. Whereas this one right here is found in an air handler that has an ECM fan motor. So the diagnosis is gonna be a little bit different between these two types of control boards, this one and a standard one with a black relay box. So that's one thing. You may be working on a boiler that has just an ignition control module. So the whole point of this is there is no fan on this one. So you need to know what you're working with in order to even diagnose it. Here you have a fan timing control board. And so this is actually installed in older furnaces, but it doesn't control ignition. And so this is oftentimes used in conjunction with one of these ignition control modules. So if you see both of these in, then you know that this one has to do with the fan motor and controlling that. And this one is more for just the ignition itself. These are control boards found in gas furnaces. Now there's a difference between these two. They're both integrated furnace control boards, which means that they're the, an ignition control module and also a fan controlling board all in one. But this one has large black boxes and that means that it's controlling a blower motor that requires a capacitor. It's just a, uh, say a 120 volt blower motor or 240 volt blower motor that has a capacitor installed and that's called a PSC blower motor. This one right here is one that's found in a furnace equipped with an ECM blower motor, which means that this control board communicates with the blower motor's control module. And so these two communicate together in order to get this blower motor to run at the correct fan speed. So you gotta know what you're looking at. This is a control board that's found in heat pumps. It's a defrost control board. And so I'm gonna to get to the whole point after this, but really you need to know how the defrost cycle works in order to even troubleshoot this. Here we have an inverter mini split control module. You can see that this one is blown out right here. And so that's a, a bad capacitor and that's most likely due to say a lightning strike or maybe, maybe this came out of a 120 volt uh, mini split, but it was installed with 240 volts coming in and it just blew the capacitor. But the reality is when you have an inverter system, the PCB is constantly monitoring temperature in order to make operational changes in the system. So this PCB is gonna make decisions on the fan speed, the compressor speed, it's gonna be the indoor fan, the outdoor fan, the metering device, it's an EEV metering device. So it's gonna make a bunch of operational decisions based on these. So really you're looking for a simple way to diagnose these and that's uh, basically you wanna look at the error codes that are flashing at either the indoor unit or maybe you have a LED that's flashing at the outdoor unit and a common problem is with these thermistors maybe getting out of calibration or something like that. Uh, some of the common problems are actually due to electrical surges on the building so, so that is an issue for these inverter systems. Now that we've identified different types of electrical control boards I want to give you a quick way to diagnose some things so we're just going to go over the initial steps and then we're gonna go back to the simpler control boards and we're gonna kind of start from scratch on the diagnosis on these. So number one thing, identify the unit the electrical control board is, is mounted in, identify its job, like what components it's controlling. You can read a wiring diagram in order to determine how it's controlled or, or what, it's, what it's wired to, and then also look at the error codes. So before you turn the power off to the system you're working on, check out the, the LED status code light and see if it's flashing any errors. Another thing you can do is the visual test, which is looking for any burn marks such as this right here or on this unit, you have a blown out capacitor. And so those are obvious signs of problems. You could also do a smell test just to see if you smell anything burnt. If you have intermittent problems, you may wanna look at the plugs. And so you can turn the power off to the furnace or the air handler and you're gonna to wanna to push in on each one of these individual wires. So the rule is, if you have an intermittent problem, you gotta be able to do something, which means that you are tightening down on these electrical terminals. 
you are checking each one of the wire connections, making sure they're tight. I can't tell you how many times I found loose connections in these 16 pin wiring harnesses for ECM blower motors. It happens a lot. And it's not necessarily the ECM blower motor's fault. It's just a bad communication between this, this control board and the blower motor. So that's another thing that you're gonna look for. The next thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna also verify that the control board does not have a blown fuse. And so you could have a tube type fuse or a spade type fuse. You could have a five amp like this or a three amp like this one right here. And so you can see these three amp ones, those are purple and the five amp, those ones are, are yellow or orange. And so you'll see a big burn mark right there if there's a problem. And so I have other videos on most of these control boards down in the description section below. So I go over how to troubleshoot each one individually, uh, but I get a lot of technicians asking, what's my troubleshooting procedure or methodology in order to go through troubleshooting any system that potentially has a bad control board. And so the next thing that we're gonna go into is the job of the control board. So really you wanna make sure that you know enough about the system to know what the control board is supposed to do. So in this case, it's very simple. 24 volt power enters on the T terminal. It then goes through the fuse and then you have 24 volts present on the R terminal. As well, you have C connected to the common on the transformer. And then it's just waiting for a 24 volt signal on the G terminal. When it does, you're gonna have this little relay is going to, to change. And so it's gonna suck in. So there's this tiny little relay right here and it's going to close normally open contacts. And so I've actually cut open the, the box, that black box right here, so that you can see the contacts inside. And so what you could have is on these little contacts right here, it could be pitted due to high current. And so they could be melted together, so they could be closed when they're not supposed to be, so the fan's just running all the time. Or you could have that the fan is just never turning on because it's just, it's pitted and the electrical connection is not occurring on the inside. You could also have the relay is bad. So really you need to confirm on your control board, hey, do I have 24 volts between the G and the C when I'm measuring with a multimeter? So if you do, and this control board is not sending out it's 120 volt or say 240 volt power to the blower motor, then you're gonna know that this control board is bad if it's not doing its job. But you gotta know enough about the system in order to troubleshoot it. And so you know, before we move on, I have an individual troubleshooting of this control board and this air handler control board, and they're both linked down in the description section below. When you have an air handler control board that has a communication harness instead of a relay and just power wires going straight to the blower motor, then you have a communicating control board. And so you need to diagnose these a little bit differently than you would with one that just has those black relay boxes that you can just diagnose pretty easily with a multimeter. And so you need to be able to test out your ECM blower motor module. And so you don't wanna blame your control board if this module is the thing that's at fault. And so this module right here can be visually inspected. And so you can inspect this little uh, current limiter right here. In this case, it's burnt. I don't know if you can see that, but it is burnt and you can do a smell test as well if it smells burnt and there's also testing tools that are available such as this one right here this is the techmate pro and so you can use this in order to uh, control or communicate with the blower motor module it's really just sending 24 volts on specified terminals in order to try to get this blower motor to spin and so if this does spin and everything seems fine then yes maybe the control board is the problem but if this does not work, then this may be the problem and not your control board. So you need to make sure that you're aware of that. So, you know, we also have individual troubleshooting videos on different types of HVAC blower motors linked down in the description section below. When you're talking about a defrost control board, then what you really need to know is what these letters are right here. And so you have a O, that's for the reversing valve, R is 24 volt power to this control board. You have W, that is your output from this defrost board to the air handler, and that's only outputting 24 volts anytime defrost is occurring. Then you have your Y, that's for the compressor, and then you have C for your common. And so you gotta know what those mean. And this is a DFT, so that's a defrost temperature sensor. And so that's just checking to make sure that your coil is not frozen. And so it's gonna have either a timing and a temperature, or it's gonna have potentially two uh, temperature sensors uh, in order to monitor for when defrost must occur. And so this has one of these little uh, relay boxes so you can determine if you have power going out to your fan motor. 
So you got to know that this is what's controlling when the fan motor turns on because during defrost, this box right here is going to shut the fan motor off. And so you got to know that. You also have your defrost timing dip switches. And so you have different styles of defrost control boards. And so you just need to be aware of how each one of these work. I have several videos on defrost control boards linked down in the description section below. And so with these, you can actually force defrost to occur in order to test them for troubleshooting. Then you have this Y terminal where it sends 24 volt power through pressure switches in order to make sure that they're electrically closed. Then the power comes back on T1. Then you have the logic on the control board monitoring how long the system's been running for. And then coming out of the control board on T2 is where it powers the contactor. And then you have the common attached to that contactor as well. Next, you see this O and C. And basically, the board is going to be powering the reversing valve during air conditioning mode and not during heating mode. Now, during defrost, it's going to be reversed. Now, if you have a unit that's a root or ream, it's going to power the reversing valve in the opposite fashion. Now, let's move on to the ignition control module. So this is just controlling the ignition of a gas furnace or a boiler. A lot of times there's a problem with just the ground wire not being connected. People think that that's just like a safety wire, but it's also really the flame rectification wire in order to receive the signal back to this control board. If that is not good, like you don't have a good ground, you're going to have intermittent problems. And so that's something that you need to look out for as well. You have your spark wire getting connected. And so that could be chafed and it's sparking not where the gas is, but somewhere else in the system. And so the gas is not getting lit. So you got to know how to, to troubleshoot in the ignition control module. You just got to be able to identify it as you are walking up to the system. Also realize that these ignition control modules typically have an LED status code light for any errors, at least on the newer ones. The older ones like this one right here, you can see there is no status light. On a new style board such as the AllSpark, you actually have an LED display and this ignition control board can be used to replace just about any ignition control board on the market. This is an IFC, that's an integrated furnace control board, and you see that this one has a LED status light. And so before you turn power off to a furnace and you want to see what the problem is, you're going to want to read the number of blinks. So the short number of blinks, the long number of blinks, and on the, the furnace uh, either on the shroud or, or somewhere on the furnace, there should be a LED status code list and it'll tell you where to start, at least where to start looking for the problem. And so you could have an issue with something like, like a pressure switch. And so it may not even be the pressure switch. It may be just a clogged condensate drain. And so some technicians are out there blaming maybe the control board, maybe they're blaming the pressure switch, but really it's just a condensate trap that needs to be cleaned out. And so you need to be able to track down the problem. And so we have other troubleshooting videos on individual components linked down in the description section below. But what you're going to do is you're after monitoring and seeing any LED status codes, you're going to then turn the power off to the furnace. And then you're going to put a, a magnet or uh, a tape over the door switch. And what you're going to do is you can jump from R to Y for air conditioning or R to G for the fan to turn on or from R to W to start the sequence of operation for heat. Now, you don't have to just jump it right here. You can turn it on at the thermostat because maybe that's the problem. Maybe there's an intermittent issue and you're not getting your 24 volt signal down to these little uh, terminals down here. So what you need to know is what each of these mean. So G is for fan. If you get 24 volts on this G terminal measured between G and C with your multimeter, your fan should turn on. If you get 24 volts on your W, the very first thing that should turn on is your inducer motor should be running. So if you measure with your multimeter between W and C and you measure, say, somewhere between 24 and 29 and a half volts, your sequence of operation for heat should occur. If it doesn't, then there may be some type of uh, safety switch that's tripped or something like that. And once again, that should be picked up by the LED status code light. But you just need to be aware before potentially blaming the control board because the issue with that is you're just going to replace that. It's not something that you're going to have in your truck. You're going to have to wait for it. You're going to replace it and then it's not going to solve the problem. So you really want to finally uh, determine what the problem is or could be before you go ordering any parts. If you have 24 volts between Y 
and measure between Y and C, then you know that the fan motor should turn on at its highest fan speed and your air conditioning should be turning on. So remember that the job of the thermostat for air conditioning mode is to touch the R and the Y and the G together in the thermostat so that you have a 24 volt signal on both the Y and the G. And then we just measure it with our multimeter at the control board with one probe in the common and one probe in the terminal that should have power. So that's how this control board really works. And so if you have any problem in the sequence of operation for heat, it's going to then flash an error code and you need to then determine maybe the part before it in the sequence of operation and the step in which it's on and diagnose in those components there. So we have other troubleshooting videos for this in the description section below. As you can see, this one right here has these large relay boxes. So this is con connected to a PSC blower motor. So you may just have a bad capacitor and maybe the, the blower motor is not running because the capacitor is bad. Maybe the capacitor has then ended up making the blower motor fail. And so that could be the issue as well. And so you can just measure at this uh, box right here in order to determine if the control board is at least sending power to your blower motor. And if it is, it's not the control board's fault. And so you could be having some type of intermittent problem with power coming in. That could be an issue. It's gonna be way worse when you have intermittent power supply problems when you have a control board like this. And so when you have intermittent problems, it could potentially damage this control board. It could damage the, the ECM blower motor module. You might wanna add a surge protection device on the furnace itself or maybe a voltage monitor in order to just protect the sensitive electronics. And so although they are higher in efficiency, they're more susceptible to damage from voltage problems. That is something that you have to worry about when you have a high efficiency ECM fan motor and a communicating control board. And so I hope this video has helped. If you're looking for troubleshooting on a specific component or a control board, make sure to look down in the description section below. If you wanna learn more about HVAC, make sure to check out some of the articles we have over at our website at acservicetech.com. Also make sure to check out our refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning book, our thousand question workbook and quick reference cards all available at our website at acservicetech.com and also on Amazon. So I hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech channel.